Hey, how's it going? So, um, I just wanted to share with you a prophecy or vision that a friend of mine received, and a sister in Christ, um, about a week ago, I think it was, or something like that, maybe a bit longer, and um, it's directly from the Lord, so I just want to share it with the world, to get the world, to get the, to get the word out there. So, it says, let me just get my face on there. So it says, last night I was woken up around 4 a.m. God immediately started speaking. He said, I want to tell you something. I focused on his voice and no longer tried to fall back asleep, but I tried to hear him instead. This is what I saw. The vision started with an image of a nurse in a hospital room. I heard today something strange happened. I was wondering what happened and the vision started. There was, a lot, there was a hospital room with a bed with a sleeping person inside. The nurse was making an effort to, to, to take care of the person and save his life, but she shortly walked out of the room to get some things. Then a man entered, dressed in black, a man with a lot of power, influence and money. He took his cloth and pushed it with force on the sleeping person, who suffocated and died. He then took a label with COVID-19 and stuck it on the person. When the person came back, when the nurse came back, she felt it was very strange the person died and it couldn't be COVID-19. <clears throat> but she couldn't quite put her finger on it. She felt the person who just dies was too healthy to go like that. She had a strong gut feeling something else happened, but she didn't know what. So she tried to shut it off and not listen to it. It continued to bother her, but she told herself she must be crazy. Then I saw the man leave the hospital. The cloth he used to suffocate the person, he tied around himself to protect himself. He went to a meeting room with a lot, with all people dressed in black. He was the leader. Did we accomplish our goal, the leader asked. How many, asked, how many millions died? Millions, sir, uh, said another man. They laughed wickedly. Soon every weak person will be gone out of our society. They have no right to live and be our burden. Let's build super nations, the leader said. But it is not enough yet. Let there be a second wave, he proclaimed. Worldwide or locally, somebody asked. Worldwide, the leader said. Let it be more deadly and faster, so it increases the fear in people and we gain more power. We make them like tame sheep. Never will they ever give us any opposition because they will be in too much fear just to survive. <coughs> people will give them people we will give them hope and certainty but we first need to take out those we don't need then suddenly i saw names starting to appear on the dark clothed members of the group some of them were who rivm texas health association institute for cancer john hopkins elon musk the leader's name was illuminati when the meeting was done all participants got bags of money to take home the greed was visible in their eyes. They were drooling and looking hypnotised by the money. They were like tame sheep in the hands of the leader. Then the leader made a call. Notify the scientists. We have permission. Create a second wave. More deadly than the first. It has to start from October. <coughs> we want the population to be decreased before December. The goal is half, but it might take a few more ways for that. Really hit the nursing homes this time. Don't let any old people live. Then he laughed wickedly. He had a statue of Satan in his office and he took it in his hand while he stared at it and said, I will die for you. I saw Satan being pleased and using this man as a puppet. What God revealed to me during prayer about this dream. The vision starts with the nurse who feels something is wrong but doesn't do anything with it because she can't see the full picture. I showed you this because there are nurses and doctors who feels the situation doesn't add up. The orders they get from higher up are weird, like filing deaths as COVID-19 when, when there's another cause. There is a lot, lot of manipulation going on. The enemy really thought this through. The population gets scared and gets smaller because of the virus. This makes way for world leaders with bad intentions to take over. You see the leader suffocating someone with a cloth he uses a face he uses as a face mask. This shows the virus wasn't in the person and the leader isn't afraid to get contaminated. 
Then you get to look behind the scenes. The people in the meeting are all people who devoted themselves to the new world order with one common goal, bringing Satan to power and letting him rule the earth. These people are the elites, the rich, the businessmen. You will not find a single ill or unsu unsuccessful person in this group because Satan chose them. All he has is this world. He is trying to exploit the worldly system as good as possible and using everything for evil. That's why you see names such as WHO and UNICEF in this group too. They pretend they're helping, but actually, actually they are destroying lives and fulfilling their own plan. This is not the end, this is the beginning. The, be the beginning of a long time of manipulative games the Illuminati plays. The people will sleep for a long time. A lot of people still believe that these people are good people and they deny they are evil. Because if they admit there's something wrong, they would have to face they would have to face that this world is becoming worse day by day. And then they would have to take action. But they're not ready for that. A lot of people deliberately keep on their blinkers so that they can keep living comfortably. But they will not stay. They will be erased like chaff in the wind. I spit them out, the lukewarm. This is the time to pick a side, and those who are not for me are against me. A lot of people have a lot of excuses and keep postponing it to follow me. Their life will be taken like a thief in the night, suddenly and faster than they would have thought. They will stand before me in regret, but it will be too late. They will not inherit eternal life. It is not enough to be in church. It is not enough to sing some religious songs. Who really knows me? Who lives for me? Who can I fulfill my plans through to show my glory on earth? I seek the earth, but there are few. Tell the people that the end is near. The end is very near for some, and others still have, and others still have some time. Don't wait too long. Repent today. Search your heart. Find everything, find everything sinful and wicked thing and kick it out of your lives for good. Only then will I be with you. The church is full of hypocrites, people who pretend they're holy in a church service, who think they have inherited eternal life because they prayed the sinner's prayer. This is the greatest lie of the 21st century. People are heading straight for hell and they don't even know it. It grieves me deeply, my child. It grieves me deeply. I want, I want people to know me, to know my heart, my word, my voice. I see hearts and I see who sincerely lives for me, lives for me and it are few. But I am raising up my people and in these times they will be spit out, oppressed and, op and, oppressed and suppressed. But they will triumph over all and be with me in my kingdom. So there we go. That is directly from God himself. So um, I'm just the messenger. We are just the messengers. Um, people beware. The end is here and uh, we need to choose a side. Choose, choose Jesus Christ, guys. Repent for sin and tell Jesus, ask Jesus, please come into my life. Please, guys, repent. Repent. God bless you all. Bye-bye.